Hi, I want to talk about the Thrive Agenda. Uh, I'm what I would call a multi-generational thriver. And what I mean by that is that um, my ancestors who came over from England and Ireland were really quickly, you know, in a matter of a generation or two, able to transition from surviving to thriving. They were able to access good education, which paved the way for good employment, eventually white collar employment. Um, that allowed them to buy homes, to house their families, to buy food, to feed their families. It also gave them access to health care. And aren't these the ingredients we need to move out of survival and into thriving? If you're home insecure, food insecure, if you don't have adequate health care, um, and if you don't have education, the gateway to all of that, you know, how, how can you move from surviving to thriving? And what I love about the Thrive Act is it's recognizing that. I mean, we say we, the United States, are the best country in the world, and that implies that we are a country of thriving citizenry. Um, and yet we know that's not true. I know that's not true. We probably all know that's not true. And when I think about what allowed my family to move from surviving to thriving, it was major government programs. Um, they played a role. They also worked hard. They used those bootstraps, you know, all that stuff. And I don't believe it would have been possible without some of the major government, um, I'm going to use the word handouts, government programs that, that helped fuel my family's ability to thrive. So I'm talking about um, land grants. Way back when my family was able to access land grants. Um, uh, my family was able to take advantage of the Social Security uh, program, the GI Bill. And all of those programs, as much as they allowed families like mine to thrive, they left behind a lot of people. They largely excluded black and brown people. They um, excluded uh, women who weren't married to men because those, those programs were all for the, the head of household as male model. And so it feels to me that this once in a generation opportunity that the Thrive Act presents us as a country is different than the other once in a generation programs like Social Security, like the GI Bill, like um, land grants, homesteading, and many more. Unlike those others, this is a fully inclusive, in fact, it's taking into account and centering the needs of people who were excluded, have been historically excluded. So when I think about this moment we're in, this crisis that we're in as a country, you know, COVID ha and climate uh, crisis are both laying bare the historical injustices that we've created in this country by having once-in-a-generation programs that, uh, that exclude. So racial injustice, socioeconomic injustice, the Thrive Agenda this time around seeks not to amplify those injustices but to course correct. So if we are here with a once in a lifetime, once in a generation, I'm saying once in a lifetime because for me it's once in a lifetime, this is a chance to really have a citizenry that's thriving. I can tell you as someone who is a thriver, meaning I'm not caught in the cycle of survival, it's a place from which we can problem solve and innovate and create. You know, this is what we say that we want to do as a country. And so I encourage President Biden and all of Congress to not go small. Go big. Fully fund the Thrive Agenda. And let's not waste this crisis that we're in. Let's recognize the opportunity that's before us and really invest in the United States and our citizenry. We are all better off when we are all better off. And 
isn't our tagline life, liberty, justice for all? Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness for all? Aren't we all supposed to be thriving? Why wouldn't we do it? Go for it. Go big.